Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Ibrahim al uh, Actually, I was uh, a PhD student in at linguistic department in Macquarie University. That was maybe uh, two years ago. And now I'm uh, assistant professor at uh, King College University at Saudi Arabia. Uh, actually, it was a wish to be there in person with you, uh, but unfortunately, for some reasons, I couldn't make it. Um, uh, my topic is, is about the conjunction system between English and Arabic. And uh, this kind of uh, comparison is uh, a multifactorial, uh, where some factors like uh, the, the, the factor of language, the factor of translation, uh, the factor of register and time span uh, are investigated. Uh, uh, in my presentation, um, uh, in my presentation, I will uh, briefly uh, review uh, the main concepts and theoretical frameworks that underpin my study. Uh, that include uh, the, 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 the concept of universal of translation, also language variation and change, and finally, the conjunction system. And starting with the universal of the translation, or uh, what's called uh, recurrent features of translated language, this concept actually is, is a major area of interest within the, the field of translation studies, uh, in which the nature of translated language and linguistic features that typically occur as a result of a language processing involving in translation are investigated. Uh, different factors actually lead to a linguistic product that we call uh, the translation with some linguistic features that systematically sit it apart from any other language, for example, the source language or the target language. Uh, this kind of uniqueness, what they, some, some uh, scholars in, in translation studies call, uh, the uniqueness of translated language has been described in many different terms in history of translation studies, such as the third code, the third language, hybrid language, universal features of translated language, the laws of translation, and so on. Over the course of the last three decades, uh, research on the supposed universal or recurrent features of translated language resulted in processing a number of features. Uh, which usually described in terms such as explicitation or increased uh, explicitness, uh, uh, simplification, norm, uh, normalization, leveling out, and finally, cross-linguistic influence, or sometimes it's called uh, interference, shining through, transfer, or something like this. Uh, uh, cross-linguistic influence, or the, the, the interference, uh, is not only a factor of interest in translation studies, but also it's a, a, in other areas of research, for example, second language acquisition and contact linguistics. Um, in, in this study, in this study, uh, my, my current study, I talk the last, the last uh, feature in, in translation studies, and actually, it was a point of departure in my investigation. Uh, Cross-linguistic influence, or sometimes it's called in, in translation studies, uh, source language interference or source language transfer or shining through is one of the most pretend linguistic features that constantly appear to, to distinguish translated language from non-translated language. Whereas yeah, some go uh, even further and view it as the only a uh, true universal feature of translation, because actually it, it always exists in translated language. It's a kind of a niftable uh, feature that appears in every uh, translation in different, actually in different degrees. Uh, the, 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 the concept of a cross linguistic influence or interference is divided in translation studies uh, into a positive and negative. Uh, or what's called uh, overt and covert interference or cross-linguistic influence. Uh, the negative one, the negative interference, can be considered as a deviation from normal. 
where some linguistics items, linguistic items or structures uh, are transferred from the source language to the, the target language. But in the, on the other hand, a positive transfer or positive uh, interference, uh, it can be defined as an increase in the frequency of features which do exist in the target system and can be used uh, anyway, such as in my, my uh, study, that the, the, the concept or the, the, the notion of conjunction system is already used in both languages, in English and Arabic. And there's some kind of changes in, in the frequency, uh, either to be increased or decreased. This is actually a, a positive or covert uh, cross-linguistic influence. Uh, as I said before, uh, cross-linguistic influence or interference is not only a factor of interest in translation studies, but also in other areas of research, for example, second language acquisition, uh, contact linguistics, and so on. It's actually considered as an important mechanism of linguistic innovation, uh, through which bilinguals transfer kind of structures, uh, constructions from one language to another during different communicative situations. While the focus of uh, many language contact studies has been on spoken language, uh, seen as most significant domain of linguistic in uh, interaction, it has been argued that it's important also to consider written communication as a possible site of language contact and language change. Since uh, as Viper and Gray state, grammatical innovations could develop in, in, in natural written communication. Uh, as a, co a consequence of cross-linguistic influence, translations uh, may contain linguistic in innovations or change and usage patterns, either positive or negative, since it's, uh, it's, uh, its nature as a medium process that uh, reformulates a source text in one language into another language. Uh, the effect of translation actually uh, as a potential factor in language change are subject to the spread of the source language features beyond translated texts. Uh, if we take this kind of changes that come from the source language to the target language, if it starts this kind of uh, changes spread to the, 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 the original, for example, um, in, in my case, the original Arabic, non-translated Arabic, uh, at that time, uh, that was the point of departure of a number of recent studies that have aimed to investigate translation, what they call it, translation-induced language change. And uh, actually it's aim of, for, for my study. Uh, so my study is, is uh, set uh, in the interface uh, of translation studies and language variation and change, and aims to investigate the effect of cross-linguistic influence from English on translated and also non-translated Arabic text as a recurrent feature of translated language and potentially as a factor in contact-induced language change. And Actually, I choose the conjunction system uh, to be my tool here to, to, to investigate this kind of change that, or the potential change in, in Arabic language. To this end, the study utilized the conjunction system or more specifically the conjunctive items and their logical semantic relations in English and Arabic uh, as a way to originalize cross-linguistic influence, effects on translated, and also non-translated Arabic. Uh, the study actually uh, approaches uh, conjunction from a textual cohesive perspective and draws on Holiday and Matheson uh, typology of conjunction system in English in 2014. Uh, in Arabic, uh, actually, uh, there, there was now, uh, we can say, uh, a comprehensive study that um, classify and, and uh, categorize the, 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 the concept of conjunction. So uh, I draw on uh, three uh, studies, uh, Al Jabr 1987, Al Kaulani 2010, and Asaif 2012. Uh, 
uh, Ajman on their typologies of connectives in Arabic. Uh, with the variety of terminology used for conjunction items, this study actually will use the term connectives to refer to all conjunction items that can mark links in, in a text at different levels. That, that will include the, the, the group and phrase level conjunctive items like and or but, also the structural conjunctions which operate on the, the, the close level and functionally link closes to each other. And finally, conjunctive, uh, conjunctive adjuncts, which operate beyond close level and relate closes to the preceding text. Uh, all of these uh, items uh, I include in my study and investigate. Uh, the question here, why conjunction system? Why did I choose to uh, operate uh, conjunctions uh, in my study? Uh, for different reasons, actually. Uh, while conjunction is an important means of achieving text cohesion in many language systems, language actually utilizes such items differently. For example, English and Arabic, in my case, demonstrate some yeah, uh, con uh, contrastive differences regarding their frequency, distribution, preferences, uh, and register related preferences of connectives. Such differences open up scope for cross-linguistic influence and in translation. Also, in addition, conjunctions uh, have been shown to be uh, one grammatical category highly open or susceptible to contact influence linguistic change. And in, in many uh, previous studies, uh, it was the, the, the first place to be changed in, in, in many studies. Um, Regarding the, 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 the conjunction system uh, in English and Arabic, there are so many uh, actually contrastive differences, but I will mention uh, that, that the main one that uh, was proved actually in, in my study and uh, many different studies. Uh, uh, there are some contrast differences between English and Arabic regarding the use of connectives, but the main widely recognized one is that the, the frequency and variation in the use of connectives. Uh, different studies demonstrate that English tends to use a greater variety of connectives, while Arabic uses a more restricted number of connectives, but with a higher frequency. And that actually is attributed to different grammatical and stylist, uh, stylistic re reasons. Uh, so how uh, can I uh, uh, apply this uh, in, in my study to, to study the, the effect of English on, on, uh, on the, the conjunction system in Arabic? Uh, I made a, a kind of three-stage uh, analytical objectives. Uh, uh, these three main analytical objectives uh, can, and can be carried out by uh, conducting three types of analysis uh, to meet these kind of objectives. The first one is as a contrastive analysis. Uh, uh, the first objective actually is, is uh, to identify the contrastive difference between English and Arabic in terms of the frequency, uh, distribution, preferences for connectives, and there also uh, logical uh, or logical semantic relations and how they could change over time. This object actually, uh, is met by conducting the first analysis, the contrastive analysis, using bilingual comparable corpus of original English text and original Arabic text. That was uh, the, the first stage or first step. After that, we, we get a kind of uh, clear differences between English and Arabic. Uh, the second analysis is a comparative analysis in which translated Arabic text uh, and non-translated Arabic or original Arabic texts are compared. This analysis uh, addressed the, the second objective, which is uh, identifying potential differences between translated and non-translated Arabic. Uh, this will identify uh, the role of translation and potentially changing the conventions and preferences of conjunction system in translated Arabic and later in non-translated Arabic, and how these changes are related to cross-linguistic influence. 
it, it can be hypothesized that if the frequency functions or preferences of connectives change first in the translated Arabic, then in original Arabic, this would provide evidence for translation as innovator or trigger for language change, along with other factors. Uh, but if the opposite happens, that means translated language is more conservative and the hypothesis of translation induced language change can be refuted. And finally, the, the, the final stage, the final stage was uh, the third objective of this study is to examine specifically how cross-linguistic influence affect the use of connectives. It's a small specific uh, analysis to trace down the, these kind of, uh, or that, that situation of cross-linguistic influence. Uh, this uh, accomplished uh, by conducting the third analysis, which is the parallel analysis, where the original English is uh, compared with translated Arabic. Uh, actually, it's translation uh, or translated text. Uh, and this analysis, actually, translated Arabic texts are compared with their English source text in order to explore how translators treat connectives in their translation. Uh, are they more aligned with the source language or the target language norms and preferences in translating connectives? That was the, the objectives and analysis. Uh, my methodology, my methodology actually to conduct these uh, three analyses, this study employs a quantitative corpus-based approach with some element of qualitative uh, analysis. Uh, the study makes use of a custom design and compiled corpus consisting of Arabic translated text parallel with uh, their English source text and a comparable uh, non-translated Arabic text. This corpus design is diachronic, uh, containing two periods of text production, uh, the first one from uh, 1950 to 1990s and the, the second one from uh, 2000 to 2020. Uh, also, this uh, corpus is a register differentiated containing four registers, uh, fiction, legal, academic, and journalistic texts. And that the reason uh, behind uh, uh, containing register differentiated uh, corpus is to uh, differentiate between the, the effect of register because sometimes or all the time, the register has uh, a significant effect. Uh, the Krubra uh, compiled uh, were analyzed using two corpus analysis software program, Wordsmith, and actually that was for comparable uh, corpus. And the second one is a sketch engine for a parallel corpus. Uh, connectives are identified using uh, a deductive top-down fashion and then analyzed in contrastive and comparative analysis to provide an overall assessment with more detailed analysis of their uh, logical semantic relations. Um, a factorial analysis of variance, ANOVA, uh, is used as the primary quantitative statistical method using the statistical software Minitab 2019. And uh, using this kind of uh, test is to investigate the effects of uh, language or translation and uh, the, the effect of register and time span on the overall normalized frequency of connectives uh, and different analysis. For the parallel analysis, uh, a monofactorial analysis using Kaya square uh, tests is conducted to investigate the relationship between register time span and individual markers on one hand, and the choice of translation strategies adopted in translating uh, some type of connectives, which are uh, addition connectives uh, on, on the other hand. Uh, this uh, manufacturial analysis aims to reveal whether some strategies demonstrate distinctive patterns by register, individual connectives, and or over time. Uh, here's uh, a table uh, showing uh, microbes composition. Uh, 
uh, on the left column, uh, the, the, the corpus, the type of corpus, the English one, and the translation, and then the original non-translated Arabic uh, of the four uh, registers and over the, uh, the each period of time. And this is the actual number of uh, words. Uh, it was almost uh, 1 million uh, and 500,000 words. All right. Uh, let's move to the, the findings of these three uh, analyses. The first one, contrastive analysis, and actually it was to identify the difference between English and Arabic regarding the, uh, the, the, the conjunction system and the number of connectives, a frequency of connectives in, in, all, uh, in English and Arabic. Uh, as you can see, uh, table two, and uh, figure one uh, clearly do, do demonstrate the huge difference between English and Arabic. Uh, connectives are significantly more frequent in Arabic writing. Uh, uh, when, you, uh, when we look at that, that the English, for example, the row frequency uh, is about uh, 24,000. Uh, on the other hand, Arabic about uh, 50. Uh, thousand, it means a kind of double uh, total. Uh, these findings actually confirm one of the main contrastive differences between English and Arabic, which is that Arabic uses connectives at higher frequencies than English. Uh, in addition, when in other factors like register and time span are considered, Overall findings also show some significant differences between the subcorpora. And uh, I'll just uh, give you the, the main results because so many uh, analyses have been conducted and so many results. I'll just show the, the, the main ones. Um, uh, this is uh, this uh, findings uh, related to the the uh, logical semantic relations uh, in, in the first contrastive analysis. Uh, when we look at the, the, the effect of logical semantic relations uh, uh, here in, in figure two, it uh, show Arabic tends to use higher frequencies of connectives across all logical semantic relations than English does. And we can say, uh, except actually with the uh, exception of the adversative and clarification relations. But for the, the, the rest five, uh, Arabic uh, use or, or um, uh, tend to use a higher frequency of connectives as well. A summary of uh, different analysis in, in contrastive analysis. Uh, for the overall differences between English and Arabic, across most of analysis presented in this stage, uh, the main effect of language, uh, that, that means when we uh, compare English and Arabic, is the strongest among all other effects, where connectives are overall more frequent in Arabic text than in English. Uh, regarding the register differences, it can be considered also as the second uh, strongest factor in this analysis, highlighting language specific register preferences. That means in, 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 in so many cases, uh, the, the effect of register is significant and clear, and uh, some differences is conditioned by the, the register preferences for the use of connectives in Arabic and English. And finally, for the change over time, uh, time span uh, shows actually limited effect on the overall frequency of connectives. However, the analysis of logical semantic relations show some evidence of change. And that's yeah, meet uh, one of my objectives in this study. Uh, for example, additive connectives, additive connectives occur more frequently in period one Arabic text compared to period two Arabic text. This short-term diachronic change effects might be explained as a change in Arabic. 
and create possibilities for cross-linguistic influence in translation from English into Arabic. And that will be clear in the, in the next uh, analysis. Uh, as we see, uh, as we say here, um, there's a kind of change. Uh, Arabic language use more connectives in, in, in old or in period one, more than the period two. And this uh, difference is, is significant. Uh, let's move to the, the second analysis, the comparative analysis, which uh, compare between translated and non-translated Arabic. And actually the, the, the aim uh, behind that is to uh, discover any kind of cross-linguistic influence from English into Arabic. Uh, the overall normalized frequency of connectives in original and translated Arabic, uh, as you can see, um, uh, table uh, three and uh, figure three show expected findings actually, uh, where there is a significant difference between original and translated Arabic. Uh, for example, the original Arabic uh, here in, in, in figure three, uh, it's about 100 uh, as the, the previous one, but the translated uh, Arabic or the connectives in translated Arabic is about 80. Uh, in, in normalized uh, frequency per thousand words. Uh, connectives occur more, uh, more than 50,000 uh, in original Arabic, but about 34,000 times in translated Arabic text. That actually supports the idea that, or the, the hypothesis of cross-linguistic influence. How is that happen? Uh, since translated Arabic text show lower frequencies of connectives than original Arabic text, uh, we can uh, assume that this kind of uh, effect comes from English because English language uh, tend to use lower frequency of connectives than Arabic. Also when the factors of register and time span are considered, overall findings also show some significant differences between the sub -corobrant. Uh, let's summarize these uh, three types of uh, analysis uh, for actually for the comparative analysis. Uh, in this analysis, uh, the, for the translation status uh, effect, uh, in this analysis, uh, the effects of translation status represent the second strongest factor after register. The overall analysis for all connectives show that connectives are more frequent in original Arabic compared to the translated text. This finding actually broadly supports the notion that translation demonstrate recurrent features that set them apart from non-translated language. This, uh, this kind of uh, explanation or a support for the idea of uh, features of translated language or universal of translated language. The main mechanism that appears here to be at play is uh, the cross linguistic influence in which that the frequency of connectives decreases in translated Arabic as a consequence of source language influence since English, as we said, uh, in general, makes far less frequent use of connectives. Regarding the register effect, the effects of register in this analysis are by far the strongest among all other factors. Uh, that confirms the importance of register in identifying the role of translation in changing conjunction preferences. Uh, many of uh, translation effect cannot be uh, achieved uh, unless we take the register effect in account. Uh, regarding the last uh, item, the time effect, once again, time span shows limited effects on the overall frequency of connectives. However, the analysis of logical semantic relations show significant effects such as for the addition relation. The addition relation actually, uh, in which period one text in original Arabic use additive items much more than period two. 
that means there's a kind of decrease in using additive relation. Where the opposite is the case in translated Arabic. And that actually uh, this, this, yeah, the, the, the frequency changes are evident first in translated and then original Arabic over time. This short-term diachronic effect may be explained as a, translate, a translation induced language change, where translation appears to be a trigger for such language change. Uh, and actually that along with other factors of language contact. Uh, in addition, it's worth noting that there are some other potential social, cultural, and or ideological factors that could facilitate this kind of change or that the tolerance uh, for uh, cross-linguistic influence and therefore lead to that translation-induced language change. Uh, the last, the last analysis for this uh, in, in this study, the parallel analysis, and that was to confirm that, that the cases of cross linguistic influence uh, in addition or additive uh, items. Uh, the parallel analysis was conducted uh, to further investigate additive connectives, since it's by the far the most frequent logical uh, logical semantic relation used in both languages. Overview of uh, translation uh, strategies, as you can see here in, in, in this table, uh, this uh, parallel analysis, uh, uh, I uh, investigate that the, the translation strategy that can be, that was used uh, by the translators in this corpus. And uh, it's divided to three main strategies, the placement, addition, and omission. And you can see that the count of strategies and the percentage. Uh, this table shows the overall distribution of translation strategies adopted in translating additive connectives. Uh, it's clear that replacement strategy is by far the most frequently used strategy. It reflects cases where connectives in present, uh, is present in the source text. It's re uh, already present in the, the source text and a replacement connective in the target text is used. This is uh, the, the strategy of replacement. It may be considered as source-oriented strategy, motivated by the default literal translation strategy or default translation. Uh, this kind of uh, strategy, it's a kind of default translation strategy. Uh, if there's a, a connective present in, in, in uh, the source language, the translator uh, directly uh, replace that with another one in uh, target language. Okay, the second and the Ibrahim, third. Ibrahim, can I yeah. Your yeah, I yeah. think that because these are the last um, items of findings, so I think we might leave, if you agree, uh, uh, time for one quick question, if that's all right with you. Yeah, Before sure. We sure. Wrap this up. Sorry, so sorry for interrupting you, but I'm sure you're. Yeah, that's all right. So either face to face or online, anyone who would like to ask a quick question. We have um, a question from Ahilika. So, do you have examples of the conjunction system in particular uh, in Arabic? Which are the syntactic and phonematic choices in Arabic? I can't understand the functional conjunctions here. So any comments on that? Uh, sorry, again, uh, is, is it written? Um, yeah, yeah, in the chat. Ah, yeah, in the chat, all right. Uh, do you have example of conjunction system in Arabic? Uh, which are the static and pragmatic choices in Arabic? Um, uh, actually, the, the, the conjunction system that I uh, depends on, uh, uh, for, it was drawn from these uh, three or that three uh, Arabic studies, and it mainly uh, draws on a holiday and a medicine uh, model of conjunction. Um, um, it's it's actually uh, quite the same as uh, categorization of uh, uh, holiday and medicine. They divided the 
logical semantic relation uh, into, for example, uh, addition relation, uh, conditional, uh, and so on. Uh, it's uh, mostly exact uh, as Matheson and uh, Holiday uh, categorization of conjunction system. Okay. Um, yeah, and yeah. almost, yeah, the same functions of conjunction. 